As we head toward the 2025 to 26 winter season, all eyes are once again turning to the Pacific, where ocean temperatures are setting the stage for the atmospheric patterns that will shape the months ahead. After last year's gradual transition away from El Nino, we've now settled into weak La Nina territory, or at least something very close to it. Sea surface temperatures across the central and eastern Pacific have been steadily cooling, suggesting we'll either see a weak La Nina or potentially a neutral ENSO phase by winter. That shift is important because the ENSO state acts as one of the main steering mechanisms for the jet stream during the cold season. In a La Nina pattern, the polar jet tends to strengthen and dip more frequently into the northern U.S., while the southern branch of the jet stream weakens. This setup often translates to colder, stormier conditions across the Pacific Northwest, Northern Plains, and Great Lakes, while the southern tier on from California across the Gulf Coast to the southeast usually experiences warmer and drier conditions. That's the broad setup, but as we know, the fine details always depend on how the pattern evolves month to month. Historically, weak La Nina winters can still bring impressive cold and snow to parts of the country, particularly when shorter-term teleconnections, like the Arctic Oscillation or North Atlantic Oscillation, line up favorably. When those turn negative, they can open the door for Arctic air to plunge deep into the central and eastern U.S., even if the overall ENSO signal favors warmth in the south. These winters also tend to feature frequent Alberta clippers and polar fronts, creating steady snowfall across the northern tier and Great Lakes, and occasionally helping to spin up coastal systems that impact the northeast. Traditionally, weak La Nina winters feature well above average snowfall across most of the northern states, especially in the Midwest and mountainous west. However, areas like the Mid-Atlantic, Mid-South, and Southern Plains often miss out on big snowfall. Now, when we look back through history for comparisons, Three winters stand out as strong analogs for this winter. 1985 to 1986, 2000 to 2001, and 2013 to 2014. Each of these featured a weak La Nina to neutral transition, similar global sea surface temperature configurations, and comparable atmospheric behavior across North America. During those winters, much of the central and eastern U.S. ran colder than normal, while the southwest trended warmer. The analog composite shows a dominant ridge near the west coast, a broad trough over the central and eastern U.S., and a split jet pattern bringing storm energy into the northern half of the country. Those years also tended to produce drier conditions across the southeast and west coast, with frequent storm systems tracking through the Midwest and Ohio Valley. For instance, the 2013-14 winter brought some of the coldest air masses in decades to the central and eastern U.S., and heavy snow from the Great Lakes through the northeast. If 2025 to 26 evolves along similar lines, it could mean another busy season for northern tier snow, and a return to more persistent cold outbreaks east of the Rockies. The latest NOAA and model guidance for this winter generally supports that idea. The majority of forecasts and ensemble means are leaning toward average to below average temperatures across the Pacific Northwest, Northern Plains, Midwest, and Great Lakes, with above average temperatures favored for the Southwest, Southern Plains, and Southeast. The core of the coldest air looks most likely to anchor across the Northern Plains and Upper Midwest, occasionally spilling into the interior Northeast when the jet stream buckles southward. For precipitation, the outlook calls for above-normal totals in the northern Rockies, the Great Lakes, and parts of the Ohio Valley, where the main storm track will remain active. Conversely, the southwest, Gulf Coast, and much of the southeast are projected to run below average for precipitation. That kind of setup fits the textbook La Nina pattern. Stormier in the north, quieter and drier in the south though the exact strength of the ENSO phase could determine how locked in that pattern becomes as winter progresses. Now, turning to my personal forecast and analysis, there's been some significant changes since my last outlook. After weighing the analogs, ocean temperature trends, and current model guidance, I'm leaning toward a colder-than-average winter for much of the northern and central United States, including the Pacific Northwest, Northern Plains, Midwest, and Great Lakes. The Northeast may end up near normal overall, but with periods of sharp cold depending on how the NAO and AO behave. The Southwest and Southeast, on the other hand, are likely to run warmer than normal, especially from Arizona through Florida, 
While much of the central U.S. experiences more temperature variability, swinging between Arctic outbreaks and brief warm-ups. While the National Weather Service and models are hesitant on bringing colder-than-average temps as far south as I have them, I am fairly confident that this winter will on average be colder than usual across most of the central and eastern states. This should be especially true across the upper Midwest, where temps could end up nearly 3 degrees below average for the season. For precipitation, my outlook is fairly similar to the National Weather Services, as well as a traditional La Nina pattern. The Northwest as well as the Midwest into the Ohio Valley look to be the most active corridor, with frequent systems riding the boundary between cold and warm air. Due to frequent cold air outbreaks, the northern plains may end up slightly below average for precipitation. The southwest and southeast are expected to remain drier overall, though occasional short-lived gulf systems can't be ruled out later in the season if blocking develops. Now for my snowfall expectations, and this is where the setup really gets interesting. Based on analogs and current trends, a vast majority of the northern U.S. looks to see above-average snowfall this winter. With more active Pacific and polar jet streams and frequent cold air outbreaks, snowfall should easily reach or surpass averages across the PNW, Midwest, Great Lakes, and Northeast. This will especially be true across the northern Rocky Mountains, as well as the lake effect regions, where snowfall could end up more than 150% of average. Unfortunately for snow lovers across the southwest, central plains, and mid-south, snowfall looks to end up below average mainly due to warmer and drier than average conditions. With the subtropical jet stream being weaker and playing less of a role this season, snowfall will be hard to come by in southern areas. Now, something new I'm trying for this outlook is snowfall outlooks for specific cities across the U.S. While I try to be as accurate as possible in this, predicting exact snow totals is impossible, so this will mostly be a for-fun section. Each city's average snowfall can be found on the left, my forecast for this winter in the middle, and last season's snowfall on the right. Starting in the eastern states, snowfall should end up above average for interior cities like Buffalo and Pittsburgh, which should both get more snow than they saw last winter. As usual, cities along and east of a 95 have a trickier forecast, mainly due to mixing issues. Despite that, cities like New York, Boston, Philly, and D.C. should all end up close to average when it comes to snowfall which is more than these cities saw last winter except for D.C. Next, moving to the central states, the closer you are to the Great Lakes, the more snowfall you should expect to see. Cities like Chicago, Minneapolis, and Detroit should all see both above-average snowfall and more snow than you saw last season. The further away you get from the lakes, the less snow you can expect. This includes cities like Kansas City, St. Louis, and Bismarck, where this winter's snowfall should be near or slightly below average. Lastly, moving to the western states, average to below average snowfall should be expected region-wide, outside of the northern Rockies. With average to above average temperatures and an unfavorable storm track for consistent storms, cities like Salt Lake City and Flagstaff will struggle to get near average, while cities like Denver and Cheyenne will barely scrape average. Finally, here is my third outlook for the upcoming winter season. Starting in the Pacific Northwest, where my forecast really hasn't changed, I would expect a wetter, snowier than average winter across most of this region, especially early on, as active Pacific and polar jet streams should bring frequent storms into this area. Depending on how quickly this train of storms shuts off will impact your seasonal precipitation, as you could dry out toward the end of the season. Across the mountain west, a very snowy season is expected, especially the further north you get. Frequent atmospheric rivers and clippers will bring storm systems through this area, especially at the beginning of the season in November and December, and toward the end of the season in March. The eastern Rockies near Cheyenne and Denver will benefit from the later snowfalls, but may not see earlier snows. The southwest, especially southern California, should once again expect a warmer and drier winter than usual. The less active subtropical jet will limit any major storms, likely worsening the drought and extending wildfire season. Coming back up north, the bulk of the brutal cold will, as usual, be focused across the northern plains and Great Lakes, where Arctic outbreaks, clipper systems, and lake-effect snow will pummel the region. 
The weak La Nina or Enso neutral that we're expecting this winter will be ripe for frequent Arctic outbreaks and snowstorms, especially in December and January. The same can be said to the south of this region, though to a lesser extent. Interior New England, the southern Great Lakes, and parts of the Central Plains should expect frequent cold blasts and semi-frequent snowstorms, though not to the extent of your friends to the north. How long the La Nina holds out could impact just how cold you end up, though. The Mid-South, Southern Mid-Atlantic, and South Central Plains will once again be in the battle zone this winter, sandwiched between cold conditions to the north and warm, dry conditions to the south. This region is no stranger to sleet and ice storms, both of which are very possible this winter. You should end near average or just below when it comes to temps this winter. The Gulf Coast and Southeast will likely be much warmer and drier than average this winter, with a few minor outbreaks of severe weather possible. With a less active subtropical jet stream, storms likely won't frequent this region except when systems pass just to the north across the Mid-South, which looks to be the only real driver of stormy weather. Lastly, the central Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and coastal New England look to be snowy at times, ending up near or just above average for snowfall. The further inland you go, the more likely it is you'll see more snow than normal. It's tough to say if the I-95 corridor will end up above or below average when it comes to both temperatures and snowfall, so a roughly average winter may be the best estimate. So, putting it all together, the upcoming winter looks poised to feature a classic weak La Nina, or near-neutral flavor. Cold and active across the northern U.S., mild and dry across the south, and variable in between. The presence of a potentially negative PNA phase early on could help establish the western ridge and eastern trough setup. And if the NAO or AO turn negative for any length of time, we should see significant cold spells and snow events reaching deeper into the east. Overall, it's shaping up to be a more traditional winter than many of the past few years, one where the northern states are frequently locked into cold air, the Great Lakes storm track remains active, and the southern states see more warmth and dryness. The exact balance between those factors will determine how memorable this season becomes, but all the signals are pointing toward a colder, snowier winter for much of the U.S., especially compared to what we've seen recently. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and have a wonderful day.